Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm Arpita and today we're going to look at how to build secure and compliant AI applications using Microsoft Purview. Right. How many of you here are aware of the Activision Blizzard attack that targeted and compromised sensitive data from the organizations? Anyone? So, with the advent of AI, many of the organization leaders today are struggling with how to manage the data security associated with the AI applications. Ensuring secure, ethical, and easy to regulate AI solutions will empower our organizations to confidently embrace the power of AI while being able to mitigate the risks. And as developers of these AI solutions, you are responsible for empowering organizations and your customers on this journey. If not, you're going to run the risk of your applications not being adopted by the, uh, by the organizations. Are you on the same page with me? Do you agree? Yes? Yes. So, when it comes to data security, what are the types of concerns you should be aware of and how your applications are being used and what are the challenges in addressing these concerns for you as developers? Let's look at those. The data security concerns related to your AI applications, right? Your users might be inadvertently leaking sensitive information to AI applications. So how do you manage what data is going in and out of the application? Data oversharing. The data that users have access to outside of the context of AI applications, that should be the same data they should be able to access within the context of AI. So how do you ensure data oversharing is prevented? At the same time, how do you empower the organizational leaders and CISOs and security admins to ensure that the users are engaging with AI applications in a compliant fashion? These are all the top of mind concerns when it comes to security of the data that organizations are managing. But it, when, when it comes to you as the developers of these applications, for a study that we have run, we've realized that many developers say that, hey, these concerns, I'm able to address these concerns, but the thing that they're concerned about is, it's not going to be a broad spectrum spec security solution that the organizations are really looking for. So while they're able to provide some application enhancements to security, their concern is that organizations say that it is not sufficient for you know, adopting these applications. At the same time, most, many developers that I've spoken to also have said that when it comes to security features, it's going background because of the resource constraints they have. They're, they're, they want to move fast by building the application capabilities versus investing in the security capabilities of these applications. That's one of the top concerns that I've heard from many of the developers that I have engaged with, right? So how do you balance this? How do you make sure that you're moving fast in your application development cycle while not having to do the heavy lifting of ensuring these applications are secure and compliant. All right, let's, look at, let's take a look at that. So this is where Microsoft Purview comes into play. Uh, how many here are aware of Microsoft Purview? Awesome, and uh, what Purview has done with security in terms of security for AI? Not a, not a lot of them, so. Purview enables data security and compliance we are enabling discovery of AI risks, protecting sensitive data in the context of how users are engaging with, you know, ensuring there are no data leaks, there's no data oversharing, and insider risk management is happening. At the same time, enabling governance of AI risks, uh, AI data, and regulatory controls. But why did we come up with this? When Microsoft 365 Copilot was introduced around 18 months to two years ago, we face the same exact problem that we just talked about in terms of security concerns and you know, challenges of the developers. A lot of organizations did not, were not ready to onboard M365 Copilot primarily because of the data security concerns. So we worked with a number of FSI customers, financial services industry customers, to deploy M365 Copilot in their heavily regulated environments, and we identified and implemented a minimum standard for AI controls and we refer to this as FSI MinBar or MVP. And by doing this and integrating M365 Copilot with Purview through these AI controls, we were able to unlock the adoption of M365 Copilot in these companies, right? And top customers that we're working with today have come to expect this AI controls, this set of AI controls as a MinBar or as the gold standard for all of the AI usage within their environment, whether it's M365 Copilot 
or any Cont Contoso chatbot that you are building, right? And how does it relate to you as developers today? Today we are introducing a set of purview APIs in public preview as part of the MS Graph that you as developers can use to integrate in your applications and bring the same level of security and compliance support that M365 Copilot today provides for your own AI applications. Let's take a look at how you do that. This is a generic Gen AI app architecture that I'm surfacing here that uses RAG. You know, it could be any other RAG architecture or any other AI app architecture that you, you look at. But by introducing, in this architecture layer, by introducing purview APIs in your app code, you're going to enable the app to be purview enlightened. So in place of this entire architecture, if you imagine M365 Copilot or your Contoso chatbot, by integrating the code in your application to work with Purvi APIs, all of the heavy lifting of security and governance and compliance that we talked about is going to be handled through these Purvi APIs by interacting with the Purview in the backend and ensuring that your, your application is acting in a secure and compliant fashion according to the requirements set within the organization. That is the key that I want to underline, I want you to take away because as developers, you should not be worried about how purview is implemented within an organization. What sort of security controls and requirements and policies a particular customer, it could be n number of customers, what they have implemented should not be a concern for you to learn about. But by generically implementing purview APIs in your app code, you are ensuring that this particular application can act in accordance with the security and compliance requirements for any customer who has implemented purview in their environment, right? So Purview is empowering your app to protect the sensitive data against data leaks, insider risks, prevention of oversharing, and enabling compliance and governance according to the policies and requirements set within your customer environment. So far, so good. Like, you know, are you with me? Let's take a look at the demo. Um, today, we're going to look at the demo of how to block the prompts for your AI application when a user asks a certain question. What are the basis on which you can block that prompt according to the policies set within your customer environment? And before I jump into the demo, here's a sample DLP policy, data loss prevention policy, a customer in, your, uh, in their tenant has set up. So what does this say here? Hey, for a given application ID, if prompt here, upload text is the prompt, if prompt contains sensitive information type called credit card number, I would like the application to block that prompt and not have the prompt getting into the LLM. So that's the policy that the organization has set up in this case. And uh, mind you, this doesn't have to be a credit card number. An organization might be working in any sensitive data. For example, they might have created custom sets, project obsidian, so highly confidential project, and they've created a label for, for that particular information and apply all, uh, applied that label to all of the documents. So, if an organization determines that to be a sensitive information, they could set up the policy as such. You as a developer do not have to worry or know about any of those things, right? So this is the policy that is set up, set up within the purview tenant. And now let's get into the so uh, application here. Here is your Contoso Enterprise chatbot. Let me bring it in here. Can you see my application? Yeah. So uh, the prompt I have entered here. As you can see, I've logged in as a user, signed in with my intra credentials, right? And I've started engaging with the Contoso Enterprise chatbot. I asked some generic questions. The application has been able to respond with the answers that the LLM is providing. And then I'm asking a question which includes a credit card number. So within my prompt, I'm asking or I'm sharing some information that's related to the credit card number. Now, according to the policy set within that particular tenant, my expectation is that the application is calling the Purview API, sending this prompt to Purview, which now understands or classifies this entire prompt and determines this particular prompt has a sensitive information type called credit card number, and the action the app needs to take is to block that. So now, Purview has gotten back to the application saying you have to restrict access or block the access. As a developer, you read that there is a restrict access and you are sending a generic information to the application, uh, to the user saying, 
it's up to you. You can define or decide what text you want to send to the user, but all we are saying is, hey, this prompt has been blocked according to the organizational policies. Imagine in this case, it could be Project Obsidian, it could be a highly confidential information, a highly risky user is coming in and asking the chatbot or LLM saying, tell me something about this so-and-so Project Obsidian related to mergers and acquisitions. I don't want this risky user or even a non-risky user to ask anything related to this particular project within the LLM context. So I have a policy kicking in, all that enterprise uh, chatbot here is doing is sending that prompt to Purview. Purview is classifying that information, identifying there is a sensitive information according to the policy and telling the application that, please go ahead and block it, right? So this information is not being sent into the LLM. Let's look at behind the scenes how this is happening. So how you could, as a developer, uh, implement that in your own application. I'll bring in this uh, explorer here. By the way, these APIs that we're announcing in public preview today are part of MS Graph endpoints. So uh, if you go into the MS Graph, you would see all of these APIs available. You could either play in the Graph Explorer or as well as some of the samples that we have published. You should be able to get to those samples and start playing around um, right after the session. So um, let me... I'm signing in as a user for... So this, this particular explorer is going to replicate what, what the Contoso chatbot has done. I'm going to log in as a user on this application. This is my intra credentials. The application has grabbed my intra authentication token. The very first call application as the user signs into this, uh, logs into the application through intra, it's taking the user's auth token and calling this API called protection scopes. And that protection scopes is attached with the user context and the application is telling, I support prompts and responses for my application. Here's the user context and I'm going to call Purview to tell me what I should be doing in this case, right? Now Purview is kicking in and responding to the application saying, hey application, for this user, for any of the prompts and responses, send the data to me where I, Purview, can act and evaluate offline and enhance, like, you know, uh, bring in all the data into the context of Purview for security, I mean, for the compliance and governance uh, use cases that the admins are expecting. At the same time, just for the prompts, upload text being prompt here, I would like for you to evaluate inline, meaning any prompt that is being sent, please send that prompt to me and you wait until I respond back to you. Right? So now let's see what happens here. The user is starting a conversation. As we have seen, there is a data for the prompt here where the data includes the credit card information. As soon as the user sends this prompt to the LLM, application is calling process content API to Purview. Calling process content, the, the prompt is being sent to, uh, to Purview. Purview is kicking in and like, you know, classifying that prompt and identifies that there is some restricted information and telling the application to say, hey, please go ahead and block this prompt. And that is the signal purview is sending back in line in real time to the application. Now it's up to the application like we saw to take that prompt and block and send the information back to the user saying your prompt has been blocked because of the organizational policies. All good, so far so good. So here's how we are uh, talking about how uh, I'm going back to my slide here. So we just looked at how the Integration of Purview APIs is enabling you to, you know, prevent the data leaks and insider risk management. <clears throat> now coming to your, uh, we, we also have published samples for all the other use cases, but I don't have time to showcase all of these scenarios today. But these are the partners we have worked with during the private preview phase for integrating with Purview APIs. They all worked with these APIs to integrate in their custom built AI applications and sharing with their customers as we speak. And uh, we're excited to share this material for you uh, as you go back and look at the samples that we've published, as well as the developer documentation that you can go check up. And that's pretty much all I have to share for today.